Hello, my name is Danny, and I'm a community archaeologist with the Citizen Project, and we are here with Crafting with Citizen. This week, I thought it might be fun for us to make fish weirs. It looks something like this. Now, the oldest fish weirs in the UK are between six and 8,000 years old. Now, there are many, many, many different types of ways that people used weirs and traps to catch fish. The one that we are going to make today is a V-shaped one. And how it worked was that you had the pointy end towards the sea and the wide end towards the beach. And think of them a little bit like corrals for fish. So what would happen, we'll see if this works, what would happen is that the tide would come in like this and fill up the trap. The little fishies would be swimming along in here, happy as could be. And then when the tide went out, the little fishies would be stuck in the trap and everybody could have a fishy dinner. Now within the Citizen Discovery programs, we have a number of these types of fish traps that we've just started recording. So we can't wait to get back out and finish finding out all about them. But now let's make one for ourselves. So these are the materials that I'm going to be using today to make our fish weir. Now you might not have these exact materials in your house or flat, but once you see how they're used in the video, Hopefully you can find a substitute and get crafting. So the first thing that we want to do is to make a little bit of mud for our stakes to go into. So I've been working with this plasticine a bit so it's nice and soft and good. Very easy for us to use. So you make one little log and then you make another little log just like this and all I find that it's always good to check and make sure that what you're going to be using to make your wattle weaving is in fact a little bit longer than what you're going to be sticking your stakes into. So once we've got this, we get our little bit of foreshore out, just like this, and we stick it down. Stick it down real good. So this might come unstuck while you're doing your weaving. That's okay, just stick it down again. Uh, you may need a little bit more than what I have here. And that's fine as well. So now we move on to putting our stakes in. And the important thing is that you have an odd number of stakes. It won't work unless you have an odd number. Um, and it's also, I find, easier to do with shorter stakes uh, because if you have longer ones, you have to weave for that much longer in order to get your wattle all the way up to the top. So what you do is you stick one in here, one in here, one in here. There we go, one in there, one in there, one in there and one in there. So you can see what we have, some lovely stakes going into our foreshore. Now, there are two ways of doing the weaving. If like me, you've ended up with two short bits like this, <clears throat> what you can do is you can start on the inside, the outside, the inside, the outside, just like this. Make sure you push it down and then you can do the same on this side, inside, outside, inside, outside, and push it right down. There we go. That's our first layer down, but you might find it easier to use a longer one, or as you can see right here, I've actually attached two shorter ones together. And now what you do is you do the exact opposite. You go outside, inside, outside, inside. And then you gotta loop it around like this. Otherwise it won't work. And inside, outside, inside, outside. And don't worry if they start popping up 
because when you put the next layer on, it'll keep them down. There we go. This can be a little bit fiddly, but it is absolutely worth it in the end. Now, by the magic of video, this is what your fish weir could look like in the end. Something like this right here. Now, you're probably wondering how we can have a bit of fun with this now that it's done. And I'm going to show you a little bit of a bonus activity. But one second. Here we are. We get our card just like this. And we see about how big our fish trap is. Now you could measure this or you can just kind of estimate and keep cutting. So we go like this, we go like this, make a bit of a triangle. This is not gonna be perfect in any way, shape or form, but actually it's not too, too bad. Just do a little bit like this, a little bit like this, and we should get something that's actually kind of all right. Now, if you want your tide to move, you may have some chopsticks or maybe some bamboo skewers or something like that. So you just take those, you take some tape, And just like this, you tape, tape your tide to your chopsticks. Now, also, if you're anything like me, you probably have a few rocks that you've picked up from the foreshore. So if you pop those down, those are going to be the things that will keep your fish coming out from when the tide comes in. And this is how these fish weirs actually worked. So what happened is you would have your tide like this. Your high tide would come in to the foreshore with your little fishies. And they would come and they would swim, 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 swim. And then the tide would go out and your little fishy dinner would remain. And that's how people in ancient times would trap fish. Well, I hope you had fun making a fish trap today. There are lots more activities like this on the Young Archaeologists Club website. Next week, I thought that we would do something a bit more sciencey. So I hope you come back and uh, have a wonderful week.